It's Wednesday, the 11th of October. This is show number 39, Photo Walkthrough, Tutorial 10, Chapter 2. And on today's show, we are going to complete the colour version of our Malkop Castle image. I'm going to quickly mention the competition, which is now closed. And we've got another tutorial on another cover disc. Yes, the competition closed last Friday, and at the end we had 70 entries. The standard has been absolutely excellent, and there have been some really creative approaches to the subject. You can see the entries at www.photowalkthrough.com slash competition1 underscore entries dot php, and the address is there on the screen as well. One of my Photocast Network colleagues, Martin Bailey, has agreed to help with the judging, and Martin produces his own podcast, the Martin Bailey Photography Podcast, where he gives really solid advice, and he always illustrates it with examples from his own work. I definitely suggest that you give that show a try. For those of you in the UK, Photo Walkthrough Tutorial 4 will soon be on a magazine cover disc for Digital Photographer magazine. That's issue 50, which comes out on November the 9th. Digital Photographer is a great magazine with practical shooting advice, interviews with leading professionals, and in-depth equipment reviews, all focusing on the needs of digital enthusiasts and professionals. Okay, let's get started with today's edits. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a sort of a Gaussian blur, and this is an effect that you might have seen uh, called a soft focus, and in uh, traditional photography it was done with a number of different ways of, um, uh, quite, quite manual ways, including things like putting a gauze over the lens, or taking a lens filter and smearing Vaseline on it. There's a variety of different ways of doing it, but we can do it here in Photoshop. So let's jump back. Now the reason I'm doing this, just to quickly fill you in on my thinking, is that this chart, if I zoom in a little bit, it's, it is very high contrast. We, we're going for a high contrast look on this, but it's starting to look a little bit sort of bitty. Um, I'm trying to think of a better way of explaining it, but what I really wanted was um, a high contrast, low color, but with a sort of a, a dreamlike quality to it. Um, which is one of the reasons we're going to darken it down a little bit as well. But uh, I wanted to give it this sort of uh, misty, dreamlike quality. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go in, a, in our layers palette, I'm going to grab hold of the background layer, and I'm going to drag the background layer onto the new layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette. And that's going to give us a background copy. And I'm going to call that, oh, I'm going to misspell it. There we go, Gaussian Blur. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Filters menu. I'm all over the place today. I'm going to go to the Filters menu, and I'm going to go Gaussian Blur. And then that's probably a bit much. This is the Gaussian Blur window that comes up. Now, if we drag this up and down, you can see it's blurring more or less. And what I want is to have something that's going to take the edge off the detail. Now, what we, this is not, obviously not what we're going to end up with. I'm going to make this blend in a minute. But I want something that's going to just sort of take the edge off the detail and, and sort of spread out some of the colour around the regions where there are colour. So I think in this case, let's go for that and see how that looks. Now, I'm going to leave this on normal blending mode, and I'm just going to drag the opacity down to zero to start with. And remember, I'm using those little scrubby sliders. You put your cursor over the the name of the slider you want to you want to move, and you get these little sideways pointing arrows. And if you click and drag left and right, you can see that's just changing the opacity up and down. And I'm going to drag it up to. We can be fairly strong with this. I would say sort of 35 thereabouts. Now, if I just turn that on and off, I'm going to. Oops. Still, now here's, here's a trick. Like, I still have the percentage selected when I scroll my mouse wheel, and normally my mouse wheel I use for zooming in and out. So if you've got a control selected like that, hit the escape key to get out of it, and now I can zoom in. And let's just see what the effect that's had. You see, there's our, our high contrast, sort of um, hard edged lines and things on there, and this just 
softens it down and gives it a sort of a... It's actually an effect that you would tend to use more on portraits than on landscapes like this, but as I say, I wanted a sort of a dreamlike quality, and I think this just helps, just give it that edge. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to generally darken down the image and start bringing out some of the detail that I want people to look at. So I'm going to go... Um, remember, I like to keep all my bitmap edits down here towards the bottom and I've just realized that Gaussian blur layer should be above the spot edits not below it um, but the uh, the next layer I'm going to do is is a dodge burn layer um, and I like to keep those below the contrast and lightning and darkening layers I like to keep them above the spot edits and the background layer and any other bitmap layers so I'm going to make a new layer by clicking the new layer icon at the bottom here I'm going to rename it soft light and I'm going to set the blending mode to soft light. Now, by default I've got black and white in my colour pickers here. If I haven't, remember I can press the D key to get black and white back. And because black is my foreground colour, I want to fill this entire soft light layer with, with the foreground colour. And do that with Alt or Option Delete. Oops, I've still got the... I did the same thing again. Look, I've still got the soft light... Um, uh, drop down selected. This is something that only happens on Windows. This doesn't happen on Mac. You don't get stuck in, in the drop downs on a Mac like you do on Windows. If this happens and, and all of a sudden you'll find your uh, things stop working like you'd expect, just press the escape key and once again alter option delete fills with black and you can see that's darkened everything down an awful lot. I'll just back that off a little in the opacity but we're also going to uh, paint back some of the um, uh, the, the black with white now. So, grabbing my brush uh, and my usual soft edge brush, and I'm going to switch the colors so that white is my foreground color. And I'm going to grab my graphics tablet and my pen, and this time what I want is to, uh, I'm going to start knocking out some of the areas here that I didn't particularly want to darken down and just examining the image for a minute there's an area here particularly on the ground where I've I've certainly over darkened it now so let's grab a brush that's a, kind of the size of the edit we want to make and I'm just going to start painting white on our layer here and that's just bringing that up to the same sort of level as the rest of the the rest of the edit so I'm going to just back this up a little bit more what I'm looking at here is the sky, which is starting to go the kind of colour I want. And I, I'm probably darkened off the ground way too much. The other place I'm seeing a lot too much darkening is up here on the castle itself. So let's even that out a little bit. I'm just changing my brush size so that it matches the size of the edit I want to make. My fingers are constantly on the square bracket keys, which I realise... Uh, it's, it's only appropriate for British and American keyboards. Um, those of you that are not got British or American keyboards, you'll need to go into your key, your key configurations and change the increase and decrease brush size keys, or at least find out what they are. Now, just in the process of um, lightening stuff up, I've gone a little bit too far here. There's, there's suddenly the edge, this bit of... Uh, stone here on the hill has suddenly gone a little bit too bright and just taking my cursor away it, suddenly that's the thing that now draws my eye most so I'm going to go back to my black and just dim that back down again and then back to my white and carry on with what I was doing so just bringing back some detail where I want it in the ground and on the castle itself trying not to go into the sky too much and I've just gone gone too far there on the side of the castle so let's just back that down a little bit let's just zoom in and once again that little area there that was a little bit over bright I am going to put some shape into the castle in, uh, in the next tutorial but that's not what I'm here to do now at the moment I'm still just evening out light and generally making the shape of the light what I want in order to guide the eye and I don't want any over over dark regions and I do want to emphasize I mentioned it last time I do want to emphasize this line here so I've lost it down here so I need just with my with my white painting onto that soft light layer just to 
bring that line back in. Just make it continuous. Don't with any any breaks will stop the eye travelling along it. And also we've now got a sort of a thick black vertical line here. So let's just soften that down a little bit. I don't mind it going dark in the corners. You all know I'm a big fan of vignettes. Um, right now, let's look at this sky over here because we've got some nice interesting cloud detail here. Um, and let's just turn on and off our layer and see what it's doing. Okay, um, I'm going to just, I'm seeing this horizon here, it seems to be a little bit dark. So I'm just going to, again with the white, just layering in some gentle brush strokes there. And those darkened clouds, probably a little too dark. They're going to get darkened up again in a minute, so I, I know that I need to just work on those a little bit and make sure that they don't go too dark. I don't want to... If anything that goes goes too dark is going to, incre going to create too much of a contrast around it and it's going to pull the eye too much that direction. So I definitely don't want... Um, I don't want the eye being drawn away from my main subject, which is the castle up here. So once again with a white brush, I'm just keeping these clouds here under control because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make another soft light layer. Let's just quickly look at that one on and off. It's getting there. We're starting to even things up. If you look at that without the soft light layer, we have got some over bright areas here and here and a little bit here. And if I turn this on, things are evening up. The sky goes darker. The the, the tones in these areas areas of the castle and the hill come closer together and stop pulling the eye so much. So we start to have the, the image focus more on the subject of what we're trying to, trying to get the viewer to look at. So um, let's leave that soft light layer alone now. And let's make another soft light layer. Uh, and with that soft light layer selected, this is going to make a new layer above it. So. And once again, set the blending mode to soft light. And this time, I'm here really to work on the bits of the sky with some cloud in it. All I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag this opacity down to 50%, because I really don't want to overcook this, and I and I might later on want to be able to drag it up or down a little bit. So this time, instead of having a black layer where I'm painting white on it, I'm now going to have a white layer where I'm painting black on it. And I'm particularly looking at these clouds. And what I want to do is just pull out some of the detail in the clouds by just painting black over them. This is burning. This is this is just like traditional photography burning. So I'm just burning around the clouds. And in particular, I'm going to try and avoid making the whiter parts of the cloud go grey. But I do want the darker parts where there's edges around clouds I do just want to bring out those edges because that's going to bring out some interesting detail. So there's a couple of just little wispy bits in the distance there, in the very far distance. And if I can just let the eye see them without making them stand out too much, it's going to look great. One of the things I always try and shoot for with these images is just try and keep interesting detail throughout. I guess this is the Ansel Adams influence on me, but if you look at Ansel Adams' work, everywhere you look, there's beautiful detail all the way through the picture. And it's that attention to detail, even in the areas that you don't particularly want the viewer to look at, that keeps you stood in front of the photograph that much longer. It should be like a wave of information hitting you when you stand in front of one of these things. Let's just have a look in there. I think I'm just going to, on the side of the castle here, I'm just going to layer in just a tiny little bit of darkness there. Let me just show you quickly what that's done. That's very small changes, but it's just taken the sheen slightly off that bright bit there. I've probably gone a little bit too far with that, so I'm just going to grab my eraser tool by pressing the E key. I'm just going to back off that change a little bit 
it is just going back to brighter now. It's what I'm trying to achieve there is clearly this is a round turret and I do want it to be sort of darker on the side and lighter on the front here because the light is coming sort of back and left um, so I want the light to be hitting just sort of left of centre on the turret which is about here which is where it should be and I do just want to bring out the shape of that turret but I don't want it to go like it's overexposed so if I turn that layer on and off you can see there is just a subtle burning down there and I'm just keeping the shape without, um, hopefully without uh, letting the detail go go too bright. That's better. It's a subtle, subtle little edit. And there's the same thing here. Just bringing back some of that brickwork. Have a look at that. That's without, that's with, that's without, that's with. And then we've got a couple of clouds here. Just so that the um, the edits on the left match the edits on the right, it wouldn't look good if the, um, the sky on the left side of the picture was different from the sky on the right, it would look unbalanced. So just like I did on the other side, layering a little bit of dark where the clouds are just to bring out those edges and also I noticed, I, I did this without mentioning it as I did it um, there's this railing here and this wooden fence post here and they were looking a little bit bright Look, if I turn that off there's clearly some cloud behind the railing there and it's just looking a little bit bright so I've just taking that down a little bit there. so let's now look at what we've got so there's two edits. We've got the soft light layer which darkens most things down. That one's quite a big edit. That one's making a large change to the, to the shot. And then we've got the second soft light layer which is just bringing out some detail in the clouds and just evening up some more light on the castle itself. So very subtle changes on the castle. Look here particularly and look here particularly just a couple of little spots here and there and you can see quite readily the changes that are being made in the sky and I think just finally on that once again with a black brush just going to blend in because I am seeing a little bit of a line just going to blend in those burns that we did on the clouds into the rest of the sky pressing very gently on the graphics tablet there just to try and layer that change in so that there isn't so much of an obvious line here and here and one final step for today I'm going to add a vignette to this image um, which is a, a third soft light layer um, I'm known for these vignettes and I, I believe it splits my audience a little bit just making a new layer um, like all the things I show you here, these are the things that I do because I like them. Um, if you don't like the vignettes, don't do them. Right, so that's another soft light layer. This time I've just named it vignette. And once again, I've got black as my foreground colour. Um, I'm going to hit the Option or Alt key and the Delete key to fill that layer with black. And this time I'm going to grab the Eraser tool. Once again, learn these key keyboard shortcuts. The E key is for your eraser. And I'm going to grab a big old soft, uh, soft edged eraser um, and I'm just going to start drawing there and I'm, and I'm going to click and draw to there and draw to there and draw to there and then back to where I started and that gives us if I just turn that single layer on that's what we get so that's alt clicking on the eyeball next to the vignette layer if you alt click and click and click it turns on and off that single layer now that's obviously way 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 too strong so I'm going to drag the opacity down to zero and then I'm going to drag it slowly back up until I get this sort of effect I'm after which is somewhere around there that's only 25 percent but if I just turn that layer on and off you can see it just darkens down the edges a little bit just keeps the eye slightly in frame and I'm just noticing that once again this line I've got let me go for a smaller brush shape, see what I mean? This line here is starting to get a little bit lost. So in one of my soft light layers, once again, grabbing the brush, pressing X to get white as my foreground colour. 
I'm just going to bring back some of that some of that line just to try and keep the line unbroken leading up to the castle. So just also paint a little bit of white along the top of that tree line there just to uh, bring back some of that little bit of detail there. It's not important to the shot but it, it may as well be there. The more detail there is, as long as it's not distracting from our main subject, the more interesting the shot is. So, right there, that's, that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Um, I just want to uh, make a, a final quick mention of tips from the top floor. Uh, as you all, all know, I, co I, I sat in for Chris a couple of weeks ago, and then Jeff Curto sat in for Chris. And this week it's Iberian X Pirello's turn, and uh, he did a fantastic show. I really enjoyed it. He did it from his car when he was sat in a traffic jam, and I think in the entire show he managed to move six miles in his car. So uh, it's well worth uh, joining Iberian X for this week's Tips from the Top Floor show. Um, and also go and check out his own show, uh, which is called The Candid Frame. And there he interviews some well-known and some upcoming photographers, and it's always extremely illuminating. Iberian X is one of my favourite shows. Uh, definitely recommend that you go and give that a try. Um, and one final thing for this week. It occurred to me that... 30-odd uh, 30, 30 shows, and I, this has only just occurred to me, but it occurred to me that not everybody who's watching is subscribed to the RSS feed, and not everybody that's watching necessarily knows what podcasting is. So I have a new short segment just at the end for um, those people who are watching through the website or maybe have found this uh, on a cover disc and maybe want to know a little bit more about how to subscribe, how to contact the show, and how to get involved in the community. So uh, there's a little segment just at the end of the show there for anybody that's interested in that regular information, and I will probably continue to include that for the foreseeable future. Okay, folks, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next week. Get the picture. I am someone who is never satisfied. Photo Walkthrough is a weekly video podcast. You can subscribe to Photo Walkthrough either through iTunes or through one of the many free podcatcher programs and websites, or by visiting our website at www.photowalkthrough.com. Subscription is free and every new show will be automatically downloaded to your computer as soon as it's released. Also, please consider joining in with the Photo Walkthrough community on Flickr, where you can post your own images for comment or critique, and do the same for others. You can find that at www.flickr, that's F-L-I-C-K-R, dot com, slash groups, slash photo walkthrough. And finally, if you'd like to get in touch with me or leave a comment for the show, you can email me at photowalkthrough at gmail.com or if you've got a mic attached to your computer, you can leave a message using the audio comments box on the photowalkthrough.com homepage. Photocastnetwork.com, your photography resource in the potosphere. Photocastnetwork.com